we're, we're people of color. We put lotion on. Yes. When you put lotion on your chest, have you ever consciously put it on your nipples? Because I realized today, I don't think I've ever actually put lotion on my nipples. Like, just when you put it on your chest, it's like, I feel like you have to purposely put it on your nipples to actually get it there. Before anybody answer, pause. So, right? That. <laughs> Wait, that was... What, I mean, you just, Yo, you yeah. just go over it. Like, it's, no, but that's what I'm saying. The... the like when you just do your test, but like you're never going like, oh, let me make sure I got my nipples in this cover. I'll be honest, I forget I'd be having nipples until I look in the mirror. To be honest, I just look. Oh shit, you I got for- nipples. Forget they exist. It's either I forget. Like why, why does Batman need nipples on his suit? Only only reason why I know I got nipples is because I either look in the mirror, or probably because my girl licked them. That's probably it. I got ice in my veins. Walk like a champion, champion, champion. I'm so cold blooded. I fear nobody. Ain't no letting down. I won't let you down. Cause I got ice in my veins. I talk like a champion, like a champion. I'm so cold blooded. I'm so cold blooded. I fear nobody. I fear nobody. I walk like a champion. Talking about that, um, if you guys didn't know, Athletes Unlimited is like. It is a professional sports organization that kind of goes into women's leagues and women's professional sports based in the U.S. So like we kind of mentioned with Italy before, uh, pro volleyball is not a thing in the U.S. until now. But um, it's just big in all these other countries. So Athletes Unlimited created a pro volleyball league for women, Mm -hmm. and it's in the U.S. So you have a bunch of all these like talent that goes elsewhere. People play on the Olympic teams. All this, now it's getting an avenue in the in the U.S. And they're doing things a bit differently than your traditional league. There's no owners. Um, it's literally all players controlled. There's, um, what's the word? Charitable. Uh, Donations. Like, charitable aspects to it. We can get into that a little bit. Um, and it's set up unlike any other league I've ever heard before. Mm-hmm. So it's basically everyone gets points. There's new teams every week. The people with the highest point totals at the end of each week are the captains. You draft a new team every week. Like, I just think it's a super dope concept for a league. Mm-hmm. Imagine if they just did that during the summer. Like, fuck the big three. If you do something like that with just a bunch of ex-pro players just drafting new teams each week, shit like that, like, that would be super dope. So, um, I definitely want you to just talk a little bit about that and also go into the diversity thing. Like, Cool. Um, yeah, Athletes Unlimited, to me, is just such a special thing um, because, like, for, for so long, um, like, college athletes that were really good, you know, All-American names, like Player of the Year, all those things, um, like, they had dreams of going professional, um, and they still do. Um, and for the longest time, um, it's just been, like, all right, I guess I'll just, I'll just sign a contract. I'll sign, like, like half my, my year away going to some, uh, some other country, you know? And you look at, like, leagues like the Coppa Italia um, or, like, the Mangalizia um, or, like, the Turkish Super League, all these things like that are not in the United States, right? They they pay very well. I think that's like what kind of attracts like these athletes to go to those places. Um, but for the most part, they get to miss out on many experiences within the United States, right? Um, and like I look at some of the big names that are playing like in the league right now, like Jordan Larson, Carcelo, um, Dejan McClendon. They've spent so many years away from the United States. They kind of like have dissociated themselves a little bit mm-hmm. of of what it means to like actually be an American, right? Mm-hmm. And the only time they get to like play volleyball for America in America um, is when they play for Team USA. And again, that there's only so many spots. There's seven spots, eight spots on the USA team, um, and hundreds of girls that want to play, right? Sheesh. And so like you you look at the the Copa Italia League and like forty percent of their of their um their girls that play are American, you know, and like you can only have two Americans on your on your on your team per um per per team. But it's like nine men. Yeah. We're only allowed two people who aren't Asian. Yeah, actually. <laughs> um so there's there's that aspect, but then again like so many girls aspire to play professional volleyball. Um, and I think Ashley Sunlit has done a really good job at uh, not only advocating, but representing what American talent can can mm-hmm. produce in America. For uh, you guys, I know I, I had them try and do some homework on this and watch some uh, volleyball. I know you guys had a pretty casual relationship with volleyball, but uh, how'd you guys feel watching it? Bro, that shit is lit. Because here's the thing is that I'm, a, I'm one of those people that if I don't have investment to the sport, I don't care what it is. I could watch it, basically. You know what I'm saying I feel that way with tennis. I feel that way with any Olympic sport. I feel that way with whatever kind of kind of comes up. And volleyball is already something that like I've like watched on TV. Like obviously, whenever like they they usually air it on TV like later rounds of the of yeah. the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. And of course, in in high school, well, name, the name of our team was Spike Everything. So we should call it our gym class. We used to fucking Spike Everything. So this shit is like lit. Actually, seeing like the technicality of the game. Mm. 
and no funny shit, it's like, it's kind of like amazing to watch if you really think about it because there's so many different aspects of the game that you wouldn't really even like um, think about as a casual fan, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, like you looking you looking up stuff in terms of like actually how to bump bump correctly, spike correctly, <laughs> oh, hit correctly, sorry. Um, and what you call it, and block correctly. It's a, it's so much technicality to the game, kind of like what you was going into really mm-hmm. about, um, you know, about how technically sound you, you yourself are. But it's entertaining. I fuck with it. And the whole co- the concept of what the league is about, I definitely fuck with uh, with what John was saying too. So it's cool. It's entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Don't I feel ask like me it about... it's a more competitive like environment because mm-hmm. of it, like doing it that way. Oh, hell yeah. It definitely makes it more, more competitive because it, it's like... Every week, somebody's like, yo, I want to be the captain for next week, so I got to go harder, push myself harder. Exactly. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's kind of, we, we, we briefly spoke on it before. It's like, yo, there's like, you could be a a, a, a quote unquote role player, but like, it's real, like the stars really shine the brightest. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can see that with volleyball. That's why, that's why I fuck with about it. It's yeah. cool. It's cool. Don't ask me about nobody's names, no names of teams though, but yeah, this shit was lit to watch. I, I, I definitely would recommend like if you, Saturday afternoon, you got nothing to do in this on. Tune in, bro. It's yeah, lit. Check it out. Um, I think that's I think that's great, Miles. I, I I like the fact that like you enjoy the the technicality, and I think like what you're speaking to is called volleyball IQ. Um, mm-hmm. And volleyball IQ is um, like your game sense, um, your speed of the game, how well you adjust um, on the fly, especially, um, and the ways in which you can make yourself more impactful, right? And you know. When you're at the amateur level, like the high school volleyball level, uh, high school and college, um, volleyball IQ, it, it's ranging, right? Like, it, there's so many kids on the team, and, like, um, some of them are better than others. Like, that's just a, a given, mm-hmm. right? But when you get to, like, the professional level, like the Athletes Unlimited, the Super Italia, all those things, the IQ is just so high that if you do not perform at your best, you are going to fail, right? right? And I think that's when you see why these people are the MVP every single week, right? Jordan mm-hmm. Larson has been the MVP. Have, has been an MVP and a team captain. Since I want to say, two. right? Since week yeah. two, her volleyball IQ is off the fucking charts. Yeah, like these she... are people who've been playing professionally for upwards of ten years. Yeah, and now they're finally getting to play professionally in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And it's like, um, with that, like I watched an athlete's unlimited game, and then there was nothing else on that night. They had um college volleyball. On. I put it on when I was doing stuff, and you can literally see the difference. Like you can watch. I there's tons of people. Like you said the tournament will be on later on the tournament. They'll watch it casually, but like when you watch the athletes unlimited, you can literally see, it's a more significant yeah. jump than I feel like watching college for a casual fan watching college basketball, a casual fan watching professional basketball. They might not see all the technical differences, yeah. but I feel like in the like with, between athletes unlimited and college, it's a huge difference. For y'all, for y'all sports fans that need a, a comparison, watch watch the Michigan Wolverines play play basketball. I think they're really great college basketball team now watch the Brooklyn Nets play basketball that's something to watch you know what I'm saying it's mm-hmm. like it is it, you compare like the levels of it it's like yo relative to the competition I think when it comes to college sports of course like it's gonna be good but then you watch what the quote-unquote the best of the best is and you see what the best and best can compete with and how they compare and fare against other quote-unquote best of the best it's different it's hard mm-hmm. to you know mm-hmm so. And I think I think that like I, I fuck the Nets by the way. Sorry, I just, I just, <laughs> they were just the first basketball team that came to mind. Of course they were. Yeah. Again, um, we do have that two K tournament coming up. The Twitch stream is going to be MT Summit Twitch TV slash MT Summit. Um, that's Sunday two thirty to six. If you guys are in the area and trying, you think you're nice at two K, you're trying to win some bread. Pull up with your controller. Uh, it's twenty five dollar entrance fee. That's Q's Barbershop um, across the street from the Walgreens and Baldwin. Go check that out and just go listen to us because it's us. It's basketball. People are going to try and win money, so it's going to be competitive. They always say the best game of 2K you're going to get is if you put up bread. So it should be fun. Uh, with that, we are done for this week. Follow us at Sartopi Sports on Instagram and Twitter. We are also on Facebook. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. And you can follow me at Offended Narwhal on Twitter. And uh, anything you want to plug? Anything you want to talk about? Um, yeah, uh, I want to say thank you guys for having me on the show. I think this was actually really Thank like, you for coming. It was very informative. Was Hell really, like, yeah. This was super insightful. I like really liked it. Like it was yeah. really engaging and like I learned a lot about <laughs> like the way other people that don't like necessarily play volleyball like understand the sport well enough to like engage in conversation, which I really enjoyed. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram at T-Y-R-E-E-K underscore M-C. Um, so there's that. Um, I don't, I would, I would link my Twitter, but it's not safe for work. So. <laughs> Is that so? Just follow me on my Instagram and whatever, what have you. And thank you. Hell yeah, you're welcome back anytime, my boy. We appreciate you coming out. I love whenever we have guests, and 
Yeah, man. Uh, for me, y'all can follow me on the Grand World Wide West underscore eleven. You know what I'm saying? Word to Julius Handles. You know, word to Andrew. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Uh, no, there's no source. Yeah, you know what I'm no saying? No source. <laughs> Hell yeah. And Black Lives Matter, as always. They do? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Shut your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is my turn to outro my, myself? Okay. Uh, I mean, last, last attack, we always plug ourselves to the end, but whatever. That's true. I don't know who this guy is anymore, right? <clears throat> right. Well, uh, first day, hmm? first day, first day, yeah. first day, huh? Uh, yeah. So uh, you can follow me on the Twitters, J underscore Thomas underscore twenty four. Uh, that's about it. Uh, <laughs> nematodes are people too. We will catch y'all next week. I got ice in my veins. Walk like a champion, champion, champion. I'm so cold blooded. I fear nobody. Ain't no letting down. I won't let you down.